We are now going to explore another facet of Chandrasekhar. We have seen his involvement in temple revival. He is also doing his 1%, actually almost 100% of doing something to help the rural poor. Water conservation and water purification is the need of the hour. The rural poor do not have access to either of them. Mr. Chandrasekhar has developed a new concept of water purifiers, which is economical and viable for the rural poor. So we will talk to him about his new ideas. So when did you develop this uh, idea of uh, making a water purifier? Actually, any sustenance and uh, livelihood we give to rural poor is need of the hour. Mm -hmm. Let us take uh, sanitation, let us take uh, healthy living, whatever it may be. But uh, being an alumni of CIPED, the premier institute of plastics in uh, India, uh, Central Institute of Plastic Engineering and Technology, I had an advantage of interacting with the uh, scientists who come to CIPED very often. As an alumni uh, key member, I was invited by the Director General Dr. S.K. Nayak to uh, explore what is the best thing we could do, adapting the technology from other scientific institutions. The CSRI, uh, Council of Scientific, Industrial and Research, has patented this technology. In fact, this is not my technology. But the problem was they had uh, developed and mastered it in lab scale method. So, in fact, there are more than 100 licensees who have taken the license from CSRI to develop this water filter, which is the lowest in the world as on record. The cost of the whole filter with 30 liter capacity with this terracotta naturally made filter is costing only rupees 500, hardly some 12 dollars in uh, US uh, currency. This can be easily uh, exported to other countries where water is the need of the hour. So the basic problem why uh, came across was two things. One is the monsoon. This is a monsoon driven industry. Once there are heavy rains, I can't do any more candles or I can't uh, even venture into this activity. Number two, manpower. Uh, we were uh, trying to adapt the world technology and embed the values into the modernization. So I selected potters from the potter community. They hardly had a uh, good livelihood because only during death people buy some pot mm. or during uh, functions like pongal or anything. So they can't make their living, square living every day. So I engaged a uh, aged potter. So he and his crewmen, they know how to uh, pack the material, how to dow it make the proper uh, uh, mix of the raw materials as I told you. Basic pottery clay is the raw material mm. where the uh, pieces are crushed into small stones and then pound to fine powder with a uh, uh, pulverizer. Now this clay has its elasticity, different elasticity in, from different uh, sources. So that was one basic problem I found. CSRA has given me a standard formula with which I should mix clay uh, sand, river sand, and again uh, sawdust. We have sawdust. Again, sawdust should be from green tree, not from a very old tree like teak or anything. So these three, uh, three materials should be sealed in different sizes. And the ratios are fixed. So I had a standard formula after paying the money to CSRI as a licensee. I was given a standard formula. So I thought, fine, it is an easy thing and I just have to mix all these three and my candles will be ready. But that was not the truth. So then I had to go back into the geology of the material I need to study. Then what I did, I studied the elasticity of each and every clay, what I could accumulate from this place. Then I changed the ratio a little bit and tried various proportions which could give me the micro pores through which the water will uh, percolate. The basic idea is very simple. Mm. The sand particle which is inside will combust totally and create the micro pore. Mm. The sawdust will burn and create the micro pore. Mm. The sand will give the strength, the inherent strength of the candle. And clay is the bonding material. Mm. Oh, age old technology, this is a age old technology. You can see in the villages people use earthen pots to filter yes. water and through that only they used to drink clean water. But today clean water is a big question. We go to big companies who are uh, charging not less than 2,000 rupees for water filters. And we don't know what is happening. Mm -hmm. Here it is a natural material. The scheme is very well uh, planned and practiced in Tamil Nadu. And uh, many pockets in Tamil Nadu, in Tiruvallur district, in, uh, in Velur, mm -hmm. in uh, South Arcade area, the water is totally brown. Mm -hmm. You can see iron uh, uh, floating in the water, iron particles floating in the water. Mm -hmm. This is the best candle uh, among the scientific fraternity proven to filter iron 
except dissolved salts, everything will be filtered with our water, bacteria, virus, and all the heavy metals will be filtered and with our is water. Is any electricity used or is anything else, any other uh, No, the water, is water used. filter, no electricity is used. Only while grinding, hmm. I need uh, electricity to grind the thing into a fine, fine sieved powder uh -huh. because that sieving is a critical yeah. part of the whole process. Hmm. Unless I sieve the particle with that fine size hmm. and I make the cake out of that particular size, uh -huh. the fine pores will not be formed. Nice. And that superstructure uh, filters everything. All other thing below is only a passive hole. Hmm. So the superstructure filters everything hmm. and it is uh, used almost for five to six years. The hmm. store. The life of the stone, this candle is five to six years, mm -hmm. and we have made community models, bigger ones also. Oh, okay. This can be fitted onto the top tank. Uh -huh. So the top tank, uh, the top portion like two different carriers. Imagine yes. yeah. one tank on the top yeah. and one tank on the below. This big candle will be impregnated mm -hmm. uh, on the tank and water will get filtered through this and it will uh, get sealed to the so other side. The, all this goes into the making of, making this, of this candle. Yeah. This is a centered uh, pottery clay uh, formed into terrafil. Terrafil is the name given by CSIR. Terracotta based filter. So that is terrafil. So these uh, water filters are at present being used by the rural poor. And uh, do you think this will work in the city? Very much. Because, see, we pay a lot of money for uh, buying modern gadgets, UV, RO and all those things. I don't deny that they, those are uh, uh, good filters or not. But the problem is it is very costly. Hmm. Affordability has become a big question mark today. Yes. So this is natural thing. There is no electricity involved. There is no chemical or anything involved. Just microfiltration. Hmm. Pour the bad water on the top, you get clear water on the bottom. The model what we have made is 15 liter bucket on the top, 15 liter bucket on the bottom. Only the wall thickness is very good. Hmm. And we have these filters fitted in, in between. Hmm. So you get pure water. And the community model, Suppose we are building modern flats. Hmm. On the top, whatever input, whatever corporation water or any water, municipality water you get, you can uh, send the input into this big tank, which is fitted with this terrafil. Nice. And on the bottom, you can uh, use the clean water, and that can be uh, given through pipeline to all the houses. So whatever water you get into the pipeline, hmm. into your kitchen, can be filtered water filter straight away. So this is economically viable. You spend only once, the builder has to spend only once, and he can use this as an EST to sell the flat. I am giving filtered water to you directly and it is uh, cost effective. Yes. So you don't need to pay any but electricity. Oh, what about the servicing, the management? I mean, how long will the filters last? And how often does uh, all the materials, how, how long has to be the changed? The stones are built up almost for two inches high. Huh. And what we do is only cleaning the superficial area where the uh, micro post may be yeah. plugged. Yeah. If the uh, uh, contamination is too high, maybe it will get closed in a matter of say two to three months. But uh, when you see the percolation is going down, hmm. or it is not percolating as effective as what it was in the initial stage, hmm. but just scrub it off with the scrubber. Plus the scrubber or anything. For a community tank, what I suggest is you can use a spray head. Huh. You fix a spray head what you use in your bathroom showers yes, yes. and uh, run it forcibly. That will uh, throw forcible water on the top of the surface. Oh. And you have a uh, slug water uh, outlet. Hmm. All the slug water will come out. come out. And it will get cleaned on its own. You have to just close the valve, again start using the filter. The normal life, what we expect as per CSIR's guidelines is five years. Mm. So five years, again, these stones don't cost much. Mm. The replaceable small cartridge, the small one, mm. this is going to cost you around uh, 25 to 30 rupees per uh, cartridge. Mm. And this particular terrafil candle is going to cost you around 100 to 150 rupees per candle. A community model which uh, filters 5,000 liter water uh, has some 18 to 20 candles. Mm. So it is nothing comparable. And in uh, city, the water is uh, almost good. Mm. Except for the microbes, for mm. bacteria, or fetal, you don't need to change it at all. I should say at least for 10 years, you don't have any replacement process. Yeah. There is one aspect that uh, we can notice, which comes out very prominently in Mr. Chandrasekhar's personality, is that he involves the local people, the rural people, around the place where he is working. He employs rural youth. There are many educated rural youth in the villages now. So he employs them, teaches them about the temples, the importance of preserving the temples, and he uses them to guide visitors who come to the temple. Another thing that he has done here in this water filter unit is to use the people who live here and their uh, you know, technology, their knowledge of pottery, their knowledge of the clay and the sand, and he uses them and teaches them how to make this. So this is giving, like, giving employment to 
all these people who at present, because of the recession, they have no employment. I wanted to do this uh, for two reasons. One, I wanted to do something back to the uh, educational institution where I studied. I was the topper in CIPAD. My director general who was a teacher when I studied, hmm. Dr. S.K. Nayak told me, you take this. Among all the scientists he declared, there are so many alumni. Hmm. Why did you do this? Hmm. Again, I, I think it is possible. Yeah. yeah, opportunity for me to do something back to the rural poor, and this is the need of it. So with all experimentations, what CSIR taught me, what they invented me, that was only a lab scale model. Hmm. I have converted it into a manufacturing model. Out of all the 103 licenses, only three or four people are successful mm. doing it continuously in, into manufacturing mode. Mm. And I am proud to say that I am one of them. Mm. And uh, the uh, consistency and the strength of this stone is much better comparable to my counterparts in other parts like Orissa and Karnataka. And we have supplied more than 40,000 candles within a short span of three to four months. Mm. So this is the success story. And I wish rain should get delayed and make more number of stones and give it to more women. When we spoke to Chandra Shekhar and asked him, how would you like to divide the time of the interview between temple revival and his work on water filters? He replied, 75% temple revival, 25% for the water filter. But I think he has given 100% from his life to both these projects. From Team V&V, &V, from Chengalpat area near Chennai, it is goodbye for now. <laughs>